Okay, welcome to the Strange North channel. In this video, I'm gonna tell you all about the criminal gangs in the city of Edmonton, Alberta. Every city in the world has gangs and Canadian cities are no exception. And when you're talking about major Canadian cities, Edmonton routinely has some of the highest crime rates. And of course, most of that crime is not gang related, but a lot of it is. Some of these gangs were actually started in Edmonton. This is where they developed originally, but most of these gangs are not based in Edmonton exclusively and they have a national or international territory. And I'm just going to jump right into the overview. So I'm going to start with the Hells Angels. I'm sure you're aware of them. And of course, the Hells Angels are not exclusively Canadian. This is an international gang now, and they started in California. But this gang has really become the most dominant criminal group in Canada, and they have chapters across the country. The Hells Angels have six chapters in Alberta. They have one in Red Deer, two in Calgary, and then three in Edmonton. And this group has been tied to all sorts of criminal activity, everything from drug and weapon weapon distribution to extortion and prostitution. And while this gang is active across the country, it seems like you hear a little bit less about them in Alberta compared to some other provinces like BC or Quebec. But they definitely make news around Edmonton every couple years or so, usually related to a massive drug bust. And with multiple chapters in the city, the Hells Angels are definitely an established gang of Edmonton. But the Hells Angels being the dominant gang in Canada usually cooperates with smaller street gangs who take care of a lot of their dirty work for them and their street level drug dealing. And over time, the Hells Angels have developed a vast network of alliances with smaller street level gangs in Canada. And this is definitely true in Edmonton. Okay, now I'm going to move on to some Aboriginal based gangs that are active in Edmonton because when you're talking about the Canadian prairies, a common trend is Aboriginal street gangs. And when you're talking about Edmonton, you have to mention Red Alert. Red Alert is an Aboriginal street gang and they have chapters across West Western Canada, but they're based in Edmonton. They use red as their gang color, and they have been known to be particularly brazen and violent. In the early 1990s, a bunch of prisoners were transferred from the Stony Mountain Penitentiary in Manitoba to prisons in Alberta, such as the Edmonton Institution. And after they were transferred to Edmonton, they faced a lot of recruitment and pressure from established Aboriginal gangs like the Manitoba Warriors and the Indian Posse. And so in 1999, an inmate named Robert Lee Wagner officially started the Red Alert Gang, along with a bunch of other First Nations inmates. And so this gang started in Edmonton's prison system, but it quickly established itself as a legitimate street gang once their members were released. And like I mentioned, Red Alert has developed a reputation as being extra brazen and violent, and they've been involved in many violent events around Edmonton. Of course, they're heavily involved in the drug trade, and they have been known to use drug runners as young as 10 years old. But Red Alert Alert also has many rival gangs such as the Manitoba and Alberta Warriors, the Indian Posse, the White Aryan Resistance, Loyalty Honor Silence, as well as the Native Syndicate. And Red Alert remains a very prominent street gang in Edmonton and they're also very active in prisons such as the Edmonton Max and the Bowdoin Prison in Alberta as well as several other prisons around Winnipeg. Next up you have the Alberta Warriors. This gang was also a result of this transfer of prisoners from Stony mountain to Alberta in the 1990s. So the Alberta Warriors gang is a lot smaller than other Aboriginal gangs in Edmonton such as Red Alert. They are mostly active around Edmonton but they have limited activity in Calgary and other areas of the province. Their gang colors are black and blue and they often use the initials AW or the numbers 123 to represent the gang. And starting in the 2000s this gang really gained a lot of notoriety in the Edmonton area very quickly. In 2004 there was a high profile case in Edmonton where six members of the Warriors lured a group of unsuspecting teenagers to a basement where they brutally beat and stabbed them. The Alberta Warriors are involved in everything from drug distribution to prostitution and there are many gangs out there that are considered their enemies including the Crazy Dragons, the Native Syndicate, Red Alert, the White Boy Posse, the Indian Posse and the Hells Angels. Although they are known to have a bit of an alliance with the Fresh Off the Boat gang based in Calgary. Next up is the Indian Posse. Now this is probably the most prominent overall street gang in Canada and definitely the most dominant Aboriginal gang in the country. The Indian Posse was founded in 1988 by brothers Richard and Danny Wolf in the north end of Winnipeg. Over time, the north end of Winnipeg has really developed a reputation as being one of the roughest areas in Canada. I remember reading about a police constable in Winnipeg named Daniel Atwell who was assigned to the Lord Selkirk Park housing development which 
which was nicknamed Little Chicago for all its gang activity. And after working in this area, he asked to leave his post after witnessing so much depravity in the area. And part of this depravity he witnessed was the Indian Posse gang prostituting girls in the area that were as young as six years old. And ever since, besides drug dealing, the Indian Posse has been heavily involved in prostitution and they often use very young girls. After being established in the late 80s, the Indian Posse quickly expanded across Western Canada and they were firmly established in Saskatchewan in the mid 90s. And in the early 2000s, they established themselves in Edmonton where they are active to this very day, selling drugs and being involved in prostitution. The Indian Posse actually created a female auxiliary gang called the Indian Posse Girls, which has taken control of a lot of the prostitution in Edmonton and Hobima, which is an Indian reserve south of the city. Like Red Alert, the Indian Posse also use red as their primary gang color. And so the Indian Posse remains a fairly influential Aboriginal street gang in Edmonton. And over time, the Indian Posse has been very resistant to ally with the Hells Angels, which is really the most dominant group overall in the country. And right now, they are considered one of the Hells Angels' major rivals in Western Canada. And they have many more enemies too. The Indian Posse also has a rivalry with the White Boy Posse, the Red Alert, and the Manitoba and Alberta Warriors. Next up, you have the Native Syndicate. Now, this is a very prominent Aboriginal street gang in the Canadian prairies. And although they're primarily based in Regina, they do have a bit of a presence in Edmonton as well. This group was formed in 1994 and they use more of a mafia style structure. They were very inspired by mafia gang structures, probably mob movies. The Native Syndicate is mainly active in Saskatchewan and Manitoba, particularly Regina, but they have a lot of business in Edmonton as well. The gang uses black and white as their gang colors, in particular a white bandana. And this is one of the Aboriginal street gangs that you'll probably see a little bit less of compared to other street gangs in the prairies. And then of course, like the Alberta Warriors gang, which I previously mentioned, you'll also find the Manitoba Warriors and the Saskatchewan Warriors doing business in Edmonton. Of course, those groups are primarily based in their respective provinces, but you'll also see members in Edmonton from time to time. Okay, so those were the prominent Aboriginal street gangs that you'll find active in Edmonton. And now I'm gonna move into a bit of a different area and mention the White Boy Posse. Now, this group was founded in 2003 in Edmonton by a man named Sean Johnson, nicknamed Fat Mike. This group is considered a white supremacist, neo-Nazi organized crime group. Now, their major motivation is to make money, and so they're involved in everything from drugs and prostitution to car theft and extortion. But they definitely lean into their white supremacist ideology and symbolism. And while they have alliances with non-European crime groups, they're definitely considered to be a white supremacist group. The White Boy Posse is currently operating in Alberta, Saskatchewan, BC, and the Northwest Territories. And like I mentioned, they use a lot of Nazi and white supremacist imagery in their symbols, flags, and tattoos. And it seems like they mainly use this imagery to intimidate. They're really just looking at making money and breaking the law. But of course, many of their members are true white supremacists and racists, and they hold those ideals very dear to them. And this group has strong ties to the Hells Angels, and they are considered to be a puppet group of the Hells Angels that does a lot of their dirty work and street level drug distribution. And of course, they've been involved in many high profile crimes around Edmonton, including the beheading of Bob Roth in 2012. This was one of the most wild and brazen events involving this group in Edmonton. But fortunately, these wild events have died down a bit and you're starting to hear less and less about the white boy posse around Edmonton. Okay, next up on the list is the Crazy Dragons. This is really one of the gangs that Edmonton is best known for. This group was founded in Edmonton and they were the successor to the Vietnamese Trang Gang. This gang was prominent for many years prior to the establishment of the Crazy Dragons, but they faced a ton of legal issues and eventually their numbers really dwindled. And so this group of young Vietnamese Canadians then went on to start the Crazy Dragons. And when you're talking about Edmonton's criminal underworld, the Crazy Dragons are very well known. In fact, there's now another prominent gang in Edmonton called the Crazy Dragon Killers, and they have become a prominent rival of the Crazy Dragons. Okay, I also wanted to mention a couple British Columbia based gangs that are also active in Edmonton. Okay, first off you have the United Nations Gang. This is a group that was formed in Abbotsford, British Columbia in 1997 by a man named Clayton Roche. And this gang has European, East Asian, First Nations, and Iranian members. It's 
really a diverse group, and they have been involved in a lot of high-profile violence, especially in BC's Lower Mainland. They have become quite a major gang. They now operate across North America, and they are involved in everything from drug production, cross-border smuggling, drug distribution across Canada, weapons trafficking, fraud, smuggling, prostitution, and human trafficking. And they have many prominent allies, including the Mexican Sinaloa Cartel, the Hells Angels, the Triads of Vancouver, and the Fresh Off the Boat Killers, and the Crazy Dragon Killers of Alberta. And so while this group is based in Vancouver, they do a lot of business in Alberta, and they're very active in the Edmonton area. One of the biggest rival gangs to the United Nations is the Brothers Keepers Organization. Now, this group was founded by Gavinder Singh Grewal, and this man was a former member of the Red Scorpions, which is a South Asian gang in Vancouver and a major rival to the United Nations gang. In fact, most of the founding members and leadership of the Brothers Keepers are former Red Scorpions. And the Brothers Keepers have really become a very prominent gang in Western Canada, and they are involved in much of the gang violence that has been plaguing the lower mainland of BC. And the Brothers Keepers do a ton of business in Alberta, and they've been fairly prominent in the Edmonton area. In fact, there was a very high profile crime involving the Brothers Keepers that happened in Edmonton last year. On November 9th of 2023, in the middle of the day, a man named Harpu Paul and his 11 year old son were gunned down at a gas station. Unfortunately, both of these individuals died at the scene, and Harpu Paul was connected to the Brothers Keepers gang, and his death came just one day after a United Nations gang member was killed in Toronto. And law enforcement is pretty sure that the shooting of Harpu Paul and his son was done in retaliation. And so there's a very bitter rivalry between the United Nations gang and the Brothers Keepers gang, who are both based in Vancouver. But violence between the two gangs has definitely spilled over into Alberta. And that shooting in Edmonton last fall that involved the murder of an 11 year old kid is definitely one of the most brazen crimes that's taken place in Edmonton over the past number of years. Okay, so those were the major gangs that are active in the Edmonton area. And of course, most of them aren't based in Edmonton exclusively, but Edmonton is part of their greater territory. Now I'm going to mention a bunch of the smaller gangs in Edmonton that aren't quite as powerful as the ones I just mentioned. You have groups such as the Inner City Boys and the Ghetto Boys, which are heavily active in the downtown east side and the northeast of Edmonton. There's another gang called ASAP, which is becoming more and more prominent in the city. Edmonton also has the North End Jamaicans and the West End Jamaicans who have territories in their respective ends of the city. The west side of the city also has the West End Boys, another prominent gang in that end of the city. One of the most interesting little gangs to me is the 3-2 Bloods. This is a pretty small gang in Edmonton, but they seem to be legitimately affiliated with the Greater Bloods Gang in the United States. And for being such a tiny gang in the city, the 3-2 Bloods have definitely developed a bit of a reputation. You also have the Clairview Crips and the Four Deuce Killers, a couple of other smaller gangs in the city. And you also hear rumblings about massive international gangs like the Mexican drug cartel slowly gaining influence in Edmonton as well, most likely allying with some of the city's smaller street gangs. And so that was my overview of the gang situation in Edmonton. In terms of your likelihood of running into a gang member, you're probably not going to. It depends. Are you involved in the purchasing of illegal drugs? Are you involved in prostitution or illegal gambling? If that's the case, then you'll probably find yourself in contact with some sort of a gang member over the course of a year. Canada in general is a relatively safe country and you're not that likely to interact with gang members. And in terms of gang territories, these gangs really operate across the city. I did a video a number of months ago talking about the dangerous areas of Edmonton and there are particular streets where you're going to find a lot more open drug use and drug dealing. Streets like 107th Avenue or the Avenue of Nations, 118th Avenue particularly in the Northeast, as well as Stony Plain Road in the West End. And of course the general areas of downtown's east side and the Clairview Belvedere area in the northeast are known to be a little bit rough compared to other areas of the city. And you're probably going to see a little bit more street level gang activity in those areas. But realistically gang activity is spread across the city and crime doesn't really have any borders. I hope you found that interesting and informative and if you got some value out of this one please consider subscribing to my channel. I try and upload at least one new video per week. And please leave your comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions on the gang situation in Edmonton. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a great day and I look forward to seeing you next time on the Strange North channel.